Okay, so the Reformation was a snowball that was uh, uh, long in, in coming. The, the foundations of the fire were, were set up for multiple years. Um, the spark and the one person who got it rolling was Martin Luther, and we'll talk about Martin Luther later. But we're going to look at the fundamental causes, what's going through Western Europe at the time that made it acceptable to at least some people, because it is going to be a split. Many people are going to stay with the Catholic Church. But what made the others who left want to leave? Why did they see it as a viable option? Okay, so we're living in, when Martin Luther gets the ball rolling in the 1400s, the people are living in a time where the Great Schism, Crusades, and Plague have already passed. So let's talk about them and why, what do they put into people's minds that make breaking away from the Catholic Church acceptable. Now when I say Catholic Church, I mean in Western Europe, the one Christian religion led by the Pope. The one unifying Christian religion, the Catholic Church, that was through the whole Middle Ages. Okay, well, the Great Schism happened where you remember there was the Orthodox Christianity. Well, the official, basically final-ish split happened in the thousands. It was called the Great Schism. So that was a really big thing. And it put into people's minds that, yeah, there are millions of other Christians who are now living their life totally separate from the Catholic Church, and they're still Christian. So that's what we would call precedent. So people can look and say, well, this group has split from the Catholic Church, and they're still going. So maybe we can split and still go too. So for 200 years, uh, the Western Europe was involved in the Crusades, trying to take back the Holy Land, a 200-year on and off again war with the Muslims of the Middle East. And the Pope had promised, the Catholic Church had promised victory. And after 200 years, they did not win. They did not take permanently the Holy Land. And so this was a big thing that the Pope had promised for 200 years they would win and they didn't. And so this made people wonder, truly is the Catholic Church exactly the only religion that has a line right up to God? Um, in the 1340s, the plague hit, killing, once again, multitudes percentage of the population. And the plague was seen as a wrath from God, or many people saw it as wrath from God, and even if they didn't see it as a wrath from God, the Pope and the Catholic Church couldn't save people. So, in let's say someone thought it was a wrath from God, you would think the Pope would be able to intercede and help, but that didn't happen. And if it wasn't, if someone was believing it wasn't from God, the plague, well, the Pope couldn't call on God to save the people from the plague. So in the end, the power of the Catholic Church to save people from the plague, it just wasn't there. And so once again, people were questioning, does the Catholic Church really have a line right up to God? And after the plague, people wanted to live life before, people still believed in God and heaven after the plague, but after the plague they wanted to live life before death. And the church, the Catholic church at the time, was very, very much into it. the idea that it doesn't matter what's going on during life because your whole job is to get to heaven. So 
after the plague, many people wanted to live life, which was incompatible with what the Catholic Church was telling people how to, how to live. Don't, don't live for the moment, live for heaven. And so then we get to the point where people are in the 1400s. That's what came before. Now, right when the split's going to happen, here's what's going on. First off, many nations are going through the Renaissance. And the Renaissance is big into art and uh, writing and science and learning. Uh, but let's not forget that fundamental value of the Renaissance was humanism, the focus on the individual. And at the time, the Catholic Church was not focused on the individual. It was a, um, the church officials were right, the church officials were the ones who uh, interpreted the Bible. The church officials told everyone how to live spiritually to get to heaven. And there wasn't room for an individual to start uh, thinking about the religion themselves or, uh, or going back to the idea of wanting to live a good and fun and educated and progressing life before death and then eventually heaven. So the ideas of humanism were incompatible with how the church wanted people to live their lives. And we get a big uh, um, questioning of authority, okay? The Renaissance was about rediscovering the philosophers and the art of the Greeks, of the Greeks, the ancient Greeks. And that was before Christianity. So you have many, many people learning about thinkers that came about before Jesus before the Christian church. And um, these thinkers, so, so in philosophy, you have a questioning of the church ideas of, uh, of, of life in general. And in science, you have a questioning of, of the science and a question, because uh, at the time the church was the expert at science, and the church was the expert at learning and all learnings, and the church did some big censorship during the Middle Ages. But now during the Renaissance, we have so many people learning and wanting to learn about from authorities, the ancient authorities, and the new authorities like Leonardo. And so with so many people questioning how things have always been done, it's only natural at the time that some of them might question uh, the actual religion of the time, too. Um, moving on, we see that uh, uh, kings in the 1500s were coming much more strong and much more powerful than they were in the Middle Ages. And so strong kings tend to, te tend to want to control and the Catholic Church was a controlling authority in the Middle Ages. Well, if a king, and not all kings, but some kings thought to themselves that they could gain more power and more wealth if the church, the Catholic Church, wasn't such an important part of their country. And what would happen in these countries is the king would become a very powerful religious figure if they were to break away from the Catholic Church and have even more influence over their nation. So if a king were to break away, they would gain wealth and they would be able to seize the wealth and the lands of the Catholic Church within their nations too. So if they did break away, and not all of them did, but if they did, they would gain wealth and gain power. Along the same times, uh, along with strong kings, is we had the idea of independent nations. Um, uh, the France and the Spain and the England, the, the longer it went, the more they became a national identity. And we always had this idea that during the Middle Ages that England and France and Spain, they were all Catholic and that was the only religion and thus the Pope, the leader of the Catholic Church, was always a third party, okay? No major, major national decisions between nations could be made without some consideration of the Catholic Church. So in order to be a truly independent nation run only by the nobles and the kings, that third party, the Pope, uh, 
can't be involved. And so some nations wanted, or that would be in their mind, the king's mind, a benefit of breaking away from the Catholic Church. They could be a truly independent nation. Uh, the wealthy, rich, and or the nobles, if they broke away from the Catholic Church, they could be part of a church where they had more input, okay? The, the people had more input in the new Protestant religions and they could get more wealth and control. And finally, for the average person, the, the 98%, uh, we see a growing dissatisfaction with what was seen as corruption in the church. And it usually focused on power and money. And uh, right in the 1500s, when the Reformation was going to happen, we see that the, the church was too involved in money. And the church was also going through the Renaissance at the time, and uh, the, the Catholic Church was starting to uh, buy the nice things in life, and the church was obtaining lots and lots of money through people's tithes, and they wanted even more money for building projects, and so a lot of the church, a lot of it was revolving around money, and church of, uh, positions could be bought and sold at the time. But the one we really want to remember is one of the biggest influences was a practice called indulgences where the church uh, would, to put it simply, basically be selling heaven for a price. And we'll talk, uh, we'll see more about that later. And with all of these brewing underneath these sentiments, with enough people, not all, many people still wanted the church and to stay with the Catholic Church, but with enough people thinking about these, in comes a catalyst, a spark, Martin Luther, who sets the whole ball of breaking apart in motion.